That is rough to look at. <laughs> oh my gosh. So rough. <laughs> hey, welcome to No Madness Life. If you're new here, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to become a member, link's in the description. Thank you very much. Okay. I think we'll put on a little moisturizer, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's try to work this into a picture that we can all stand looking at. How about that? Oh. Now listen. I know FFG's live, going over Chantal's nuttiness in the past, because there's really nothing else to go over if you're a diehard foodie beauty reaction channel, which I am not. <laughs> I do it for sport and because it's a soap opera. Uh, some sort of, in, in the, the way I look at Chantal, <laughs> right? Happy Pagan Day to you pagans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, uh, today's the hubby and I's 18th wedding anniversary. No, I thought maybe we would talk about heifers. It has me a little concerned. <laughs> Specifically a red one. I'm just saying. <laughs> just a little, little concerned. Thank you. Yes, it's our 18th wedding anniversary. We hung out all day. Um... We did the things you do on Sunday. Uh, we did Bible study all day. And now that red heifer, we took, can we talk about that? <laughs> or should we? Are we allowed to? I don't know. YouTube is very, listen, the reason I don't talk about a lot of things that I know, a lot of things I've learned, a lot of things that are lining up is because it's frowned upon on this platform, to be honest with you. And that's why, you know, people ask me questions. Oh, are you worried about the total eclipse? Not as much as I am the red heifer. <laughs> like, seriously. Um, it has already created turmoil when they were brought to Israel from Texas uh, at the end of September. Because we already know what happened in October. Um, so, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. Where's your proof you're married? I have showed my my marriage license on here. It looks pretty rough, but I've showed it. Back when Chantel said, you know, I'm like, what? Here's my marriage license. What's the problem? Listen. Who's the red heifer? It's an actual red heifer. Do you know what the red heifer is? Listen, it is a unique, it's a unique heifer. Do you know they have to comb over the body of the red heifer and there can be no more than three black hairs on its entire body? Mm -hmm. So, now, Erwin, I don't know if you want to Google that. Anyway, I'll tell you about it. Why not? Let's have fun with it. So anyway, they were shipped from Texas over to Israel, right? Israel wants to sacrifice a red heifer because um, they're going to build a third temple. And they believe that the red heifer um, will cleanse. You got your face cream and you love it? Thank you, that girl, Pandu. They have three. I heard five. I heard they have five. But anyway, they're going to sacrifice one. It was supposed to happen yesterday. I don't know if it happened or not. But it could create... <laughs> Every day, marry him. <laughs> you guys are all taking her old names. I love it. Anyway, so that's the that 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 can spark a Middle East problem between. Mm -hmm. Of epic, epic proportions. Uh, that's my concern. Where did I put that? Oh, it's over there. That's my concern. It might just open Pandora's box, if you know what I mean. I mean, it has been 6,000 years. And if you don't know what that means, I don't know what to tell you. Um... 
Just be ready. I'm not even a conspiracy theorist. I study the Bible. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing all day, studying the Bible and uh, getting right with Jesus. I'm right with Jesus, but I make sure every day to avoid temptations and uh, nonsense. But I tell you, there's, there's some stuff that just makes you go, huh? And the red heifer thing, that's one of them. That's one of them. It is already created. Oh boy. <laughs> if you only knew what comes after all that, it'll be biblical. I'll be honest with you. So no, I really don't celebrate um, a March 31st Easter. I don't celebrate pagan holidays. No, I don't. I don't worship other gods, only one. And so, yeah, it was just our anniversary to me today. Now, when Christ rises on April 22nd, absolutely, absolutely. But I love y'all, and uh, um, there's an uh, there's a there's one thing that concerns me about the total eclipse. Okay, one thing. Why is NASA shooting three rockets at the moon during the eclipse? Anyone? Anyone got that answer? And don't tell me it's to measure the effects of the moon. Don't tell me that, because if that's what you're will they're willing to tell me. And I, I, I have no idea what the truth is. You think they're trying to stop it? Has anybody ever known? Okay, 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 let's talk about it. Now, if you were to talk to, like, you know, the professionals of the atmosphere, right? They know everything. They know, you know, uh, the moon. Okay, I'll make it easy on you. <laughs> uh, what rises in the east? The sun and the moon. What sets in the West? The sun and the moon, right? Okay. Make it make sense. How are they going to cross over in the West to East? How, how are they? How, how are they? West to East. Yeah, CERN will is going to be a part of that. Yes, that will be the beginning of CERN. Also, was that Swi it's in Switzerland, right? C E R N in Switzerland. Isn't that where they're from? The CERN. Uh, yeah, that's concerning. Concerning. Mm hmm. They've been playing with that moon. Is it the moon though? Guess we'll find out. Fuck around and find out is what my motto is. It is scary stuff. It's biblical. To be honest, it's biblical. Oh my goodness. Listen, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for all this movie to be over. I'm ready for the finale. I don't know, Jennifer. It just depends. But... There's, okay, there's this camera. It's, the, I think it's the Nikon, the N1000. I think it's the Nikon 1000. <laughs> you should look why they're going to quit selling it. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah, I've already said that, um, I've already said that, yeah. What if there is three days of darkness, which means darkness as in power grid? What if? And they blame it on the four minute. 
And, and I'm not even making that up. Did you know that the emergency... What's the name of that? It's through Homeland Security. It's called like a preparedness thing. Is it the Emergency Preparedness Thing Act or whatever? They put out that people need to have food and water and da 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 da. Right? So maybe you should listen to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can you can go find all the stuff. You ain't gotta listen to me. Don't know, Zoo Flute. <laughs> like I said, if they tell you one thing, there's more to it. Trust that. Get ready for the purge. Listen, here's my plan. You cannot wipe out the computer chip in a vehicle, right? If the battery is not connected, correct? You can't fry electronics if they're not connected, right? Or can you? I have questions. Like, let's just say you disconnect the battery on April, you know, 7th. <laughs> just questions. I may have to Google that. <laughs> I may have to Google that. <laughs> you know what I find interesting? Here's another interesting thing. And I find this interesting. Like, I'm all about, you know, looking at stuff. Yeah, may or may not be. Uh, but I find it interesting that Na NASA has like this whole parking lot <laughs> uh, that's like a museum of like 1970s vehicles. I'm like, wow, they're collecting old vehicles. That's cool. You know, the ones without computer chips. <laughs> they would have to be in a Faraday cage. Okay, gotcha. I hope that's not what those rockets are going to be about. You know what I mean? Diddy! <laughs> it's the 1600s again. <laughs> uh, you can't grow a potato that fast. I think you'll starve first. It could be leveraged. But nobody knows if a Faraday anything hasn't been tested, has it? Disconnecting the battery won't do shit. Ugh! Funny you say that, Detective Cochise. Let's talk about it. What if I told you I'm in a house that is complete lead paint? <laughs> I am. I can't get a signal in this house half the time. You ever learned about that? Have you ever learned about that? I'm just asking. I know, Detective Cochise, and other things, other signals, especially my phone signal. Now I can go outside and get four bars. I come inside, I only get one, sometimes I don't. There you go. I'm gonna stay right here inside my Faraday box. <laughs> should, I, should I bring Max in? No, I don't lick the walls and I've never seen anybody eat paint chips. You know, that's how you got people to quit painting with lead paint. Is that what Walmarts are coded in? It seems like every Walmart, there's a lot of stores you can't get a signal. It's weird. It is weird. It's bizarre. But I know one thing. A 5G don't make its way in. <laughs> oh, yeah, I seen that. They did that in Hawaii, like Oprah and the gang. It's all right. It's all right. They'll all be all hiding underground where they belong. They'll all, all those rich people, they be hiding. They be hiding. Hide and seek. Come out, come out wherever you are. Mm-hmm. Money, they think money can, look at, there's something wrong with them all. So anyway, can we talk about the red heifer? It's going to cause hell in the Middle East. Hell in the Middle East between Israel and the Muslim countries. Biblical. There's no reason 
There is absolutely no reason to sacrifice a red heifer. Because God said Jesus is the last sacrifice. The end. You know what I'm saying? The end. There's no reason for it. But they believe that it will cleanse the site where they're going to build the third temple. You're doing nail polish. All right. Yeah. 100, right, Charlie's mom? Yeah. Yeah, and they don't recognize Jesus. It's going to be a mess, yes. Do I mean like a Highland cow? No. It is a red cow. You don't have the bangs. No. This this thing is pure. And it, it can have no more than three black hairs on its entire body. It is, is pure red heifer. And that's biblical. And Texas, they sent them to Israel. And what? How many days after that? was the beginning of that war, like seven or 10 days? Exactly, Debs, Oregon, good for you. Never heard of it. It's time you start cracking a book <laughs> because we're at 6,000 years, 6,000 years. No, they hand look. There's no scanner. They have to go they have to go over the entire heifer's body. Yes, the path of destruction will be wide, wide, and uh the path, other path will be narrow. You may even be alone. Same here, pass for pets. I'm not worried. I'm ready. Let's do this thing. Let's end all the evil. How about that? Yeah, not everyone believes in Jesus as Lord. <laughs> so, path will be narrow. Amen. You're always alone, me too. And I'm fine with that. I find peace with that. I don't like the the sound. I don't I don't like the noise of the world. I don't I don't like the noise of the world. I really don't. And I'm cool with that. Yes, and the last sacrifice, Charlie's mom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do, yeah, I do well alone. I really do. I, I come on here to have fun and stuff. And uh, I keep, listen, I keep things light because everybody has their own path. And... I only speak about mine because it's my channel, right? But if you only knew how much of evil I have to fight, I don't really fight it because <laughs> I'm protected. So <laughs> I wouldn't even care if the dark spirits try. They're always going to be around you, especially those that don't fear them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's fine. I'm just saying, I, I've been Bible studying pretty much two days straight, but because there's some things that just seem to be lining up and I'm like, yeah, I got some more work. I got some work to do. I got, I got some work to do. And so that's what I've been doing for two days. And there's a lot of things lining up that have to do with a lot of numbers, like 6,000 years. <laughs> uh, uh, very important number. And I'm like, here we are. I mean, it, it, it's, it's definitely something to pay attention to uh, because it is... Not being broadcasted, because of course not. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, but the movement, 
The movement is incredible right now. The awakening, let's call it that. The awakening is incredible right now. I have been moved by so much going on and no fear, none whatsoever. More of a, at peace, like joyful. It's incredible. It's incredible. I feel bad for people. Like I do, but I don't. Because like, there's just certain people that I can't feel bad for when they've turned their back. Remember, um, like, like, let's, like if we even talked about foodie beauty, right? Okay, so uh, growing up as a Catholic, uh, you know God and uh, you know Jesus Christ, right? Um, and then you turn your back, um, maybe for a man, I don't know. Um, and you see, you see the effects, you see the depression, the fear, the uh, misery, right? And you're like, eh, there it is. And you say, how does God feel about that? You know what I mean? Like, you, we are seeing it. She's denying it, but she's she's suffering. She's feeling it. Um, but that's a transition, you know. That she's want, you know, that she she made. She made. And it, it's not about religions either. It, it is about what you believe. Because the truth is, there's a lot of religions out there that are like false preaching, false idol tree. Um, they want you to idolize them. Some are out there just for the money, like for real. Like they're just there for the money. And if you follow people like that, they're gonna follow you down the wide path, not the narrow path. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't I don't need that. Like I said, I was shown that when I was very young. I think I was like 17 when I was shown. And like I said, God puts people in your life at the right time for the right reasons. He also removes people from your life at the right time for the right reasons. And at that point, my pastor, God removed me from that pastor and it shook me. And then I realized what a personal journey your faith is. You're not there to have ta attendance taken. You're not there for everybody to go, see, we're all together. We're all saved. Ain't how it works. Some of, some of these pre preachers out there, they're not leading you to God. Mm, think about that. So it's a personal journey. And anyone that does not follow, and it doesn't matter what religions are, how do I put it? They are a organized. Christ never said, you have to be a part of an organized religion to believe in me, for I am the truth, the way, and the life. And the only way to God is through me. That, that doesn't mean a religion. That is what it is. You don't have to be standing with a hymnal with 50 other people to prove you're a Christian or prove you're a one with Jesus. Jesus is one of God. You don't have to do that. You do that in your home. Do you see what I'm saying? So running around, I'm this, I'm that. Okay, where are you at with Jesus? <laughs> That's all I got to ask. Other than that, I don't care. And if you don't believe he's the son of God or he is of God or he is God or a part of God, human form of God, well, you're on your own. You're on your own. That's what separates us all. And I don't really care what they all believe. I really don't. really don't. You can read all of John in the Bible. And how do you get uh, John, Luke, Mark, Matthew? How do you get them from all different walks? Because remember, there are no telephone. Nobody wrote anything down. This was their experiences. How do you get? Explain that to me. If you don't believe in the New Testament, you tell me 
how they all described the same thing. And everything fit like a glove from all different walks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, I'm telling you right now, I don't need to be convinced. I don't even need the debate. I really don't. If the only way through God to God is through him, there we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there are people that are not believers, and that's fine. You live your best life. But my channel, my rules, talk about whatever I want. Uh, Passover isn't here yet. It's not here yet. It's just not here yet. Now, pass, Passover is when the Israelites were released as slaves from Egypt. And Christ was crucified during Passover. And he rose on the third day. We're not saying in three days, on the third day. So, Sunday. When? Well, April 14th, he was crucified. So, or no, wait. Yes, April, wait, let me see. April 22nd is when he rises. If you go by the moons and the Bible, it's not the same as Easter, no. Easter is a celebration of a fer fertility goddess and the pagan that's in the pagan. Now, the reason they changed, like, Christmas, 20, December 25th, is Christ's birthday. Um, and it's not. It's definitely not. If you ask all the sheep herders during that time, it wasn't December. Because of uh, the flocks of sheep. They'll tell you it was spring. Um, summer. It was summer solstice, right? But... They did December 25th because it was Tomas, right? Tomas died. Was it Tomas' son died? Hmm. December 23rd. And he wanted him to rise on December 25th. It was a whole thing. But you have to know. To know. But anyway, that's a pagan holiday too. And don't get in fights over religion in this chat because you're all entitled to your own walk. No, he didn't roll the stone away on Easter. Easter is Ishtar. Easter is Eostra. Easter is Eostra. She's the goddess of fertility. Easter has nothing to do with Jesus. You've been taught that, but no, it don't. You can go research. You have to research so much. But there's a Bible in 1775 that um, basically things were removed and changed from that Bible in 1775. You can research the Bible of 1775. It names all the months of the year. And did you know that interlary is the 13th month? They removed the 13th month. There's 13 months with 28 days. Now we have 12, day, 12 months with 31, 30, 28, 29 days. There's so much. Yeah, you don't need to worry about the dates. Jesus died and he rose. Is it called the Geneva Bible? I can't, I couldn't remember. But yeah. That's the Bible of 1776. Well, in your walk with Christ, Easter can be, but go look up Easter. That is the name of the goddess. Pagan, we don't, in my religion, we do not worship any other gods. I know that but most folks don't, and they call it Easter, and they have eggs and bunnies. Yeah, well, the eggs. Okay, so eggs, fertility. Bunnies, do the math. Nothing produces more than bunnies. That's all they do. 
put two bunnies in a cage and go back and look in about six months, <laughs> you'll have a farm. Okay. <laughs> so there's that. I know. That's why you got to ask yourself, Erwin, why the path is narrow. There are a lot of people not sitting in church celebrating today. The path is narrow. <laughs> I'm telling you, narrow. When Chantel got the male and female hamsters, so they would listen, hamsters are different. Hamsters will just kill each other. You do not put two hamsters in a cage. They will, they will, yep. If, if, any smart pet shop will tell you. I don't know how they do it over in Kuwait, but in the United States of America, you buy a hamster, you buy two of them, they'll say, do not put them in the same cage. One, one ain't going to make it. <laughs> I, I don't know the, du, the Douay Rhymes Bible. I'll have to check that one out. Many things they've lied about. Yes, you can only go by the Bible. Not what, like I said, God took me away from my pastor when I was a teen. And I haven't been back. He was a man. He was a man. Walking his path with God. And I'm not going to follow him because I guess it's okay to cheat on your wife when you're a pastor. All will be forgiven. That ain't how it works. And that's what he did. I didn't lose faith in God. I lost faith in men standing in a building telling me they walk with God. There you go. <laughs> the end. I'm telling you that you are telling me what I already know. Oh, no, I was talking to someone else. Yeah, I was talking to, yeah. If God can create the whole world, he can keep his word intact. Yeah, and it's crazy because there are other, let's just say, books, other than the Bible, books, right, that tell you to believe God's word. But then they turn around and tell you the Bible's corrupt. How can it be corrupt if they tell you to believe God's word? And then they, be, they change things. That's corrupt. That's corrupt. The end. There is just no way around it. And I don't listen to people. I listen to what I read. And it's insane. Now listen to this. This one's going to blow your mind. Think about this. Yes, it's Preach It Sunday. You don't want to be here? Well, then... Go worship your pagan goddess. Anyway, listen to this. Okay, listen. What if? Now you're going to, okay, everybody knows revelations, right? Oh, that's meant to like fear God. <laughs> it's coming, right? The the seven seals or the wait, the six, six seals. The six seals, right? Um, are we at the sixth seal? Got to ask yourself. What happens in the sixth seal? The moon goes dark. The sun goes dark. The moon goes red. And that's when Jesus comes. Now remember, he said, from Adam to now, 6,000 years. And that's where we're at. 6,000 years. And we got a total eclipse. Wow. But how do you know that any of the other five seals have been open? Because you've got the white horse, the red horse, the dark horse, the pale horse. See, Revelations is, listen, Everything we ever learned or thought. Okay, let's say what we thought. Like we've watched the Left Behind movies and all that. Right? We've watched those. And Revelations is the one, you know, the mark of the beast, all of it. But in my opinion, everybody's always tried to guess, what's the mark of the beast? What I think it is, is when they denounce Jesus 
and Christianity. And I can only think of one religion that does that. Anyway, um, and then if you don't take whatever their mark is, you will be executed. You will not eat. You will not live until you denounce Jesus. And that's why you're told not to take that mark. But the only way you can eat or live, just die, okay? There are seven seals. What well, the seventh seal? Oh, peace. I'm sorry, you're right. Seventh seal's peace, right? Okay, so we're at the sixth seal. I don't know. We're at the total eclipse. The, the, the sun goes dark. Uh, the moon glows red. Um, there will be darkness. But anyway, um, what if you read Revelations in a totally different way? Now remember, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. What if the end is a bunch of Benjamin Buttons kind of deal, okay? For every seal that's open, a curse of the past goes away. And we end up on the new earth, Genesis 1. What if it's every part of this is going backwards? Like we lived in a movie and at the end is the new peace, the new earth, which is promised to us. Maybe we end up in the Garden of Eden, all of us. Well, those that believe. Do you see what I'm saying? Read Revelations like that because you're going to see things in Revelations that have already occurred. So is this the um, removal of the curses? We are transitioning to the new earth. But if you look at Revelation and you read it, this time don't read it as the future, the end. But read it as and this occurred. The earthquake, uh, uh, wait a minute, where was it with the harlot and the walls crumbled? That's in Revelations. But it's happened. So what if we are Benjamin buttoning our way back to pure and good and the evil will be destroyed? Whoa. Do you see what I'm saying? What if? Well, the third temple is what they're talking about. Sacrificing the red heifer so they can build the third temple. And what happens when they build the third temple? They will knock the dome off the mosque. Do you see why when the red heifers arrived in Israel in September, it's like the end of September, why Hamas attacked Israel? You see it? Is that what's happening? So what happens when they sacrifice that heifer? You are going to see the Middle East become Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon. Well, the resurrection is actually on April 22nd. If you, if you go by the Bible... If you go by the Bible, the resurrection will be April 22nd. Passover starts on the 14th. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Right. Um, that's what all this, this, that's what's going on. This is all about. Now, the, the, the red heifer was supposed to be sacrificed yesterday. I don't know if it happened. All I know is that Russia has moved all its ships into the Red Sea, at least a lot of them. Uh, that's new. <laughs> I mean, there's so much that is lining up. I don't know what's going to happen with the um, total eclipse. Some people believe that we're going to have three days of darkness. And not like, it's pitch black. No, we're talking power grid. 
We're talking, uh, welcome to the 1600s. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what a lot of people think. I don't know. I mean, we're going we're gonna to obviously find out. There's no stopping it. It is what it is. I just can't figure out why we're going to shoot. Uh, NASA's going to fire three rockets up there at the uh, total eclipse. People are like, oh, they did it in 2017. I'm sorry. I missed that memo. I missed that memo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> Heat wave? Not here. Whip. Listen. I'm telling you, canned goods, <laughs> water. Well, and that's the thing, Capone. Uh, yeah. If Well, if it's an EMP... Uh, a predicted EMP, then we will not have any electronics. There will be no communication. Your cars won't work unless they're like 1970s. <sighs> well, the Passover doesn't go by a date. It goes by the moon. The new moon. So you have to look that up in the Bible. Anything that's been taught to you, your your brain's a computer chip. You you know you just follow along, right? Uh, a lot of people are having an awakening, and people are studying harder, and people are learning new things. And um, nobody knew there was you know thirteen months. Nobody knew that March is the first. March first is the first is the new year. Uh, nobody knew a lot of things because everything has been for a reason. Like okay, let's just say. Uh, Christmas, like I told you the Tomas story, right? Um, the reason that they decided to say that Jesus' birth was on December 25th is because they chose, they chose that date for a reason because they were trying to recruit. They figured if they could recognize their holiday and add Jesus is born to it, they could recruit more Christians. That's how that's how that started. And then it just never, never got changed. It never got rectified. That sounds that that's sound good. We will have a break from you bombarding in my for you page. There's a for you page on YouTube? Huh? I thought that was just TikTok. And who's we? You got a mouse in your pocket? Or is it you and the devil? Is it, is it you? No, Tomas, like T-A-M-M-A-S. Uh, you, you, you and the devil. Okay, cool. I don't want you here anyway. Have no fear. None. I'm protected. So, have fun. Go, go over where you, where you can do some work. <laughs> yeah, go to your For You page. Chances are you don't even have a channel, right? Because you couldn't. You couldn't handle it. But you love being a troll. That's cute. Well, life goals. Hi, Shane. I'm glad you're back, Shane. <laughs> My coworker who is apostolic. Yes. Celebrates Passover. Absolutely. And we're supposed to go back to the apostles teaching, not the church, not the religions. Apostolic teachings. You have to forget everything you've learned and relearn. I'm just saying, you might want to. Good for you, Nikki. Bless your heart. Oh, I'm protected by the devil. Okay. Can't wait to meet you in person someday. What path are you walk in? I mean, that, it sounds sad. It sounds sad. Oh, you're a villain. So you're, uh, okay, got it. Well, guess what? As in my life in real life, you are not gonna take up that kind of time. It's probably Salah. Because we know he don't believe in Jesus. Or Chantal, because she don't believe in Jesus. There you go. Deb's going to pray for you. So anyway, that's just my Sunday preaching. I've been doing a lot of Bible studying. And yes, I'm doing apost apost apostolic. The apostles. 
I am not doing, you know, uh, TV hype. I'm not doing, um, don't forget, this is how it is, hype. I'm not doing any of that. People who don't know will learn, not relearn. True that. Yeah, I know. You're protected. Why are you protected? Not your Salah. We should live by God's word, not by man's creations. Absolutely. And you know, man is deceptive in all sense of the words. How easy would it to be to lead you into fire if not to get you to believe something that is not in the Bible that's been changed, right? That's the, that's the wide path. Enjoy the wide path. No, I got a lot of work to do still. I still have a lot of work to do. You're never done learning, ever. And if you feel anxiety, anguish, depression, addiction, it's time. It's time. If you want to be set free, it's time. From the grasp of the devil. I'm just saying, for real, I'm not even playing. Like, shit is going down. If you don't see it, I don't even know what kind of blinders those are. Did you guys hear another ship hit a bridge in Oklahoma? You've been studying all day too? Blessed and calm, absolutely. Now my husband's in the kitchen just making a mess, right? He's in there making eggs, right? I've been busy all day. He's been making eggs, coming out with little eggs and sausage, right? We didn't... We ain't cooking for each other today because I wasn't in the mood for eggs and sausage. He was. I was in the mood for, um, what did I have? Uh, a waffle. And that was it, right? And other stuff I was doing. Anyway, then it rolls around, right? I got chicken strips over at the Dairy Queen. I'm like, I'm in the mood for some chicken strips. I don't know why, I just was. So I went and got chicken strips when we were leaving the grocery store. He went, he came home, mixed himself up some slop in a pan, right? I go into the kitchen. I said, look at this man. What a life he lives. He just puts those dishes in the sink. And by the miracle of God, they just get washed and put away. <laughs> He's funny. But I'm going to tell you something. I found... Now, my husband's usually penny pincher, right? And you know how you can get that? We both love yogurt, right? I love yogurt and cheese for lunch. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's light. It's beautiful. Well, see you later, Range Rover. Uh, guess people got done with your bullshit. Anyway, don't bother me none. Uh, anyway, so there's your plate, right? And, you know, there, it's cheap. It, now it ain't. I mean, it used to be like 40 cents. Now they're like 89 cents. Well, of course it is. The rich man gets richer while the poor man gets poorer. Anyway, now they have. Now listen, he's a penny pincher. But they got this yogurt in a jar. Do you want to see it? And we're talking $2.89 a piece for one yogurt. And my husband goes, I don't care. That is the best yogurt, hands down. I'm like, what? I said, I seen that in the fridge. And I was like, whoa, does that look good? And then the next morning or next afternoon, I was craving yogurt. I opened the fridge to see if that glass one was in there. Oh, no, he took that shit to work. Your man's frugal, too? I need a dishwashing elf. I, you know what? If Mr. Tiggs is going to run my house and think he can just live here for free, I'm going to start teaching that dog how to do some shit up in this house. You know, people, like, they got a dog. Let me go, go get me a water. That dog opens the fridge, grabs the water, shuts the fridge with its shoulder, you know. Of course, it's like a Mastiff or something, but not a little Chihuahua. But if I put it down low, what if I put my little beverage cooler, my little beverage fridge? What if I put that down on the floor? And then I say, Tiggs, get me a water. And I have him trained. He opens it up with his teeth, pulls me out of water, shoulder checks it, and brings me a water. There's a... Listen, that dog, now Jax, forget it. Jax is useless, except for he's adorable and he's emotional. But Tiggs, this, this dog, is this, is, he's the spirit of a human, I'm telling you. And I treat him as such. I talk to him as such because I'm well aware. I'm well aware. He knows what's up. 
And I know that dog can understand English. It's not slave labor. He is treated like a king. In fact, I just bought him another bag of carrots. Organic. Organic. He gets organic. He gets filtered, purified water. So trust me, he gets a baby. He gets his own blankie. No, no, no. This shit ain't slave labor. Uh-uh. No. This is called responsibility. Like you teach your children. Tiggs ain't gonna do it. Probably not. You could write a good children's book. Would it be good though? My dogs are completely different. Jax is one of the funniest dogs I've ever seen in my life. This dog is just, he's a one man show. Tiggs, Tiggs is like concerned about you, the atmosphere, the weather. Tiggs is in tuned to the outside world. I mean, he's energy. Not Jax. Jax like, did that make you laugh? Maybe this will make you laugh. That's Jax. So they're both unique. And I can't love one better than the other. It's like when you have two kids with different personalities, right? You can't expect to mold your children into what you believe they should be. No. You look at them. You watch them. You study them. And you will be absolutely enthralled with the creations that they are, right? Right? I've never understood people out there that can't just sit back and look and, and just take in the essence of the personalities of everything around you. Everything living. You know what I mean? And that's why I like human behavior. I can sniff people that are not happy. People that are going through it. Because you know, miserable people try to make you miserable, right? And you, you, you can sense that. They, they try to act like they don't, like they don't care. But they do. It shows. They use filters. They hide behind camera or black screens, right? It makes them feel more confident. Because truthfully, they can give it, but they can't take it. And that's pretty cowardly, if you ask me. But that's, that's just the way I see it. I know Chantel's hurting. I know she's lost. And I want to believe someday she will really be touched by God. I really want to believe that. I want to believe she will drop to her knees and say, I can't do this on my own. I'm not strong enough to fight these addictions. And we know where addictions come from, do we not? We sure do. I'm just saying, I hope someday she drops to her knees and gives it all away. I'm at your mercy. And her whole life will change in the blink of an eye. Peace will come upon her. And there's no fight. It's gone. It's all gone. Same with Katie. I seen a, a clip of Katie. And uh, boy, when she's drunk. Whew, she is a force to be reckoned with, is she not? And Doug said, I'm out of here. And she's like, because he, he, he hid her vodka because she'd had enough. She was literally standing in the kitchen cooking and nodding out and couldn't keep her balance. And of course, those people that just either are living a way more miserable life than her, addicted to pills and alcohol or whatever they're going through, they didn't even probably shed a tear when you see right in front of you someone who has absolutely no control, even though they think they do. I'm watching it. I was sitting there watching it. It was on a clip channel. I think the channel was Blondie who put it up. I think it was Blondie. 
And she said, he said, you've had enough to drink. She's like, where's my bottle? If I were him, I'd dumped it out the sink right in front of her. But obviously he's afraid of her. He's afraid of the devil, I suppose. The devil might have come at him, right? Out of, right out of her body. Right? But anyway, if I were him, I would have went, watch this. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't have been there because I'd have been like, no, this ain't happening. Because what happens when you leave somebody like that alone? They change. They have to. Um, you mean foodie? Well, foodie found God. Foodie didn't find God. If foodie found God, you'd know it. Like I said, I thought when she went over to Kuwait, this was going to be it. But no. Maybe she said it to uh, fit in. I don't know. But no. Who finds God and gains 100 pounds? Exactly, lock dog. Right. And uh, anyway, so Doug was like, I'm leaving. I'm not doing this. So, and of course, after he left, she had to, she made herself a drink. That's for sure. He said, you're choosing the bottle over me. He said it right on a live stream. I was like, holy shit, here it is. Uh, anyway, so then he left. And then she was, you know, trying to um, save face or whatever. We don't, I don't need him. I don't need him. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. For real. But he's already had a stroke. And probably the reason he ain't sticking around it's because she'll give him another stroke. You know what I'm saying? You fighting the devil. <laughs> you're gonna, you're it's gonna give you a stroke. Uh yes, Jennifer. We're gonna continue on with the um foodie beauty revert. Yeah. So where we're at right now, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Um, for sure. I got to go to the post office, drop some orders off. People ordered rose clay bars. People ordered face cream. People ordered t-shirts. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Um, but anyway, I got to go to the post office first thing in the morning and drop off all the packages. And then when I go live, I've already got it set up. I'm ready to go tomorrow. I wasn't ready to go today because this is preach it Sunday, right? And yeah, we're still going to follow this religious journey that Foodie Beauty has made as content, which means it is subject for comparison, criticism, all the above. No, I didn't. I don't know who that is. Look at you guys. I love you guys. You're good humans. Capone, you're good human. Jennifer, good humans. Good humans. I like the way you guys converse with each other. I like that. If we're, if we're sassy, just say, you know what? I'm taking you kind of sassy. And they say, you know what? I'm sorry for that. You're right. It probably was a little sassy. I get it. And people can be very passionate. And it can be taken in all kinds of ways. You know what I mean? So people are not really in here trying to hurt people, but, you know, it can be taken that way. Seemed to be she was having a hard time denying Christ. I, you know what, Charlie, that's what I said. Okay, so, you know how they say, okay, um, there, there, there's so much with this sin, sin, sins, sins, sins. We're, listen, Jesus Christ died for our sins, okay? And we shouldn't take that lightly. For what he went through, for us to all be sinners, wow, a sinless man. Can you imagine? Anyway, no, I can't. When I seen the passion of Christ, I think I cried. I cried so hard, I threw up. And that didn't even go as far far as the Bible does when it says how badly he was beaten. And trust me when I say, uh, he took that movie far enough that it made people physically ill, like for real. But can you imagine if he had taken it all the way to the description it would have been unbearable, I'm sure. Um, 
But like when people talk about sin and sin and sin, the biggest sin is to believe in God and then turn your back on him. You might as well have, uh, what, a thousand weights on your feet and dropped into the river, into the sea. Like I said, even when I buried my son and I couldn't understand why God took my son away, I never lost my faith in him. I heard this little boy, oh my God, he called into a radio show, right? The sweetest little boy, he's from Nebraska. And he had a calf that was born from an old elderly cow, right? And the calf, he loved that calf. And the calf died. So he calls this radio show. This is like the most heart, just insane. Uh, this little boy called and he said, can I, he calls the radio station. I think the boy's name is Nate. Um, and he says, can I tell you what God said? He said, can I tell you what God told me? And he said, sure. He said, sure, tell me. And they told about the old cow that had the calf and the calf wasn't, didn't do very well, probably because it was born of an old cow, right? Anyway, he loved that calf and the calf died. And he was crying because he loved that calf. And he said, guy, why did you take my calf away? And God says, sometimes I have to, son. And he said, but I love that calf. And he said, and I loved my son. God said, and I loved my son. See, so sometimes you have to think when you have loss, right? You gotta think. So amazing. It's so amazing when something makes sense to you. You know what I'm saying? And it changes everything. It was very profound. That was so profound. Like, I mean, the little boy's crying as he's telling this radio host what God told him. And it, it it's incredible because I always believe that children, children get to see and hear things we can't anymore. Things that... We've lost the privilege, you know what I'm saying? We've lost the privilege, we've lost the right. And that's just the way I feel. And it's preach it Sunday. Out of the mouth of babes, yeah. I mean, my son told me he was uh, three years old and he was supposed to be taking a nap. Of course, you know, little freaking three-year-old boys. Anyway, I heard him in his room talking. And I said, you are not asleep. He said, no, mom. And I said, well, who are you talking to? He points to the window. He says, I'm talking to my sister. I said, oh, you're talking to your sister? And he said, yes. She has yellow hair and she plays with a red ball. Fifteen months later, I gave birth to a little girl with yellow hair. Sometimes you need to listen to those little kids. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, I believe the evil are fighting back because they've lost and they don't like to lose. So it's gonna get really ugly. Even though they know they've lost, Hollywood's lost, there's a lot of evil that do evil things. And I'm thinking we're seeing God's wrath because, you know, sometimes it gets to a point. It just gets to a point where enough's enough. Lawlessness, evil. You know the word for uh, violence? Hamas. Did you know that? Hamas means violence. So look it up. 
Um, well, I think we're at that point. And that's why everything's crazy right now. Believe or don't believe, but have you ever seen this in your lifetime? Any of it? Trains, planes, and automobiles. Trains, planes, and boats. Sorry, trains, planes, and boats. Have you seen anything like this in your lifetime? Lockdowns. Exposing. Hollywood. No, we haven't. <laughs> And I don't know what's going to happen on April 8th. I don't know what's what's going to come out of a sacrifice of the red heifer. Will the red heifer be sacrificed? Was it sacrificed yesterday? Will it be sacrificed this week? I don't know. But I'm ready. Bring it on. It's time. People are tired. People are tired. Your milk expires the seventh. People are like, should I hold off on my mortgage till? <laughs> you know, you can always extend it to the 15th, right? Always dress for the apocalypse. Absolutely. When Jesus comes, say, do you remember me? Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's all the teachings for today. So if I were you, it is time, I feel like, to remove yourself from all the things you've ever learned and go relearn. Go relearn the truth. Remove yourself from things that are not from the Bible. It's time to let it all go. And I'm trust trust me when I say you will have an awakening. You will feel no fear, no anxiety. I promise you that. All right, guys. Have a wonderful night. Now I'll see you tomorrow for what are we on? Part four? We're in part four. Because we are examining. This spiritual thing going on with Foodie Beauty ever since she took the Shahada. It's fascinating. I won't get in depth because then, eh, you know what I mean? Eh, no, I'm not going to get in depth. But we're going to observe. Always observe. Do not involve yourself. Observe. You are to take an observer's point of view. Do not involve yourself. Please. Don't get sucked in and don't try to believe in this, that, or the other thing. You just walk the narrow path. All right. God bless y'all. Have a good night. I love y'all. See you tomorrow. Yes, I was preachy. Bloop. You'll be fine. It's Preach It Sunday. Mm. All right. Love y'all. <laughs>